Welcome back to another episode of the Views from the Sis podcast. Back here again in the studio with my boy B. What up? That's sis? Really right. Oh, no. <laughs> he was uh you called you went by something else. It was and swizzle. And swizzle. Yep. What I do the next day after we filmed the podcast. Call me I walked up. No, 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 I didn't. Oh yeah. I walked up to your side of the clinic. Uh-huh. And I said, "What's up, Noah?" <laughs> Yeah, that, we really ain't wearing these, man. We yeah, no, we're not. We can't wear these. That was just for the intro. That was for the intro purposes. Let me actually see again for real. It got darker. Did it? Yeah, it did. It's all good though. What happened? Oh, the light bulb went out. Yeah, I think it flickered last time. That's what it was. Yeah. So I wasn't going crazy. No. Okay. Well, this is not sponsored, but. It's delicious. We trying to get sponsored. Come on, Ghost. You know what I'm saying? Like, Ghost, we drink your beverages almost daily. This orange creamsicle? This is gas. It's delicious. This is the best flavor we have. Like, this actually tastes like, you know, the, the ice cream. Mm-hmm. The creamsicle? Yep. With the, the orange, with the cream on the inside? This is, like, I used, I've tried the citrus, the mango, and then this one. This is by far the best. This is really good. We are drinking these at like 7.30. Who are we? On a Thursday. On a Thursday. We got work tomorrow. <laughs> we got patients to see. We got to be in up. the morning. <laughs> Way too light. Oh, my God. Taking a melatonin. Best believe that. <laughs> two. I'm taking two. Going night-night. That's it. Yo, we went to IHOP the other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we had an experience. We did. But it was after it was after a whole day of training. Oh, should we just go back to the training? Because we want to talk about the training. Let's talk about the training, my guy. We got to talk about that TikTok too. Which one? The E five E four E. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we got to talk about that. Oh God. Okay, yo. So I mean, I guess we go back to the training. I broke my ribs. Homie broke his ribs. Yeah, I broke some ribs. What was he doing? Carrying him? You were carrying me. Oh, no, it wasn't when I was carrying you. Oh. <laughs> it was when I was carrying the first patient. Okay. Literally the first lift. Yeah. First lift. So it was CMRP training. Yeah. And that's basically field medic training. Yep. Right? They get ready want, to go to war. Get ready to go to war. So they want to simulate what being a medic out downrange looks like to the right. best of their ability. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. And... You know, coming from tech school, I'm used to working on mannequins. Yep. And so the first patient we see <laughs> is a real person. It's a real person. You start feeling on them like they're a mannequin. You're like, oh, shit. I'm sorry. I'm like about fault. to open this mannequin's airway. About to do a ding. <laughs> Needle D on this real person. This real person. He did a really good job, though, of faking being a mannequin. Yeah, he did. Because he was just lifeless. Like, I had no idea it was a real person until I touched his face. And it was like, oh. I was like, warm. Your skin, <laughs> your skin is warm. Like, y'all did. A, these mannequins are starting to look lifelike <laughs> you're like wow they're getting real good around here and then he talked and i was like oh god <laughs> <You're> like, ah. <laughs> you ain't supposed to do that <laughs> it's so funny because like when we when i first started working on my mannequin oh so we were working on the same person yeah yeah and i i knew who he was like i knew who, they, who he was so i like went down there and like patted him i'm like it's okay buddy you're gonna be all right i was trying to get him to laugh but he wouldn't smile he was just locked in he's he like doing I'm a, a good job i'm a mannequin i'm a mannequin <laughs> no that was crazy but and like Right after all that, like you got the, like, the fog machine, smoke, like it was yeah. real. Like, Gunshots, <laughs> bang, bang, bang. People yelling at you, screaming at you. Right after, and we did the oh, lunges God. and squats. It was an intense day. Yeah, and we were late. The and pediatric we late. clinic was late. But we had stuff to do. <laughs> Report time was eight o'clock. <laughs> they didn't tell us about no seven. They didn't tell us about seven. We all walked down there together. No coffee. Oh, tired. Still, tired. I made coffee. That's what pissed me off. Me too. That's I, what pissed me my, off. My Yeti was still. Was I made the whole pot made. of coffee. Went in there and I was like, I'm going to pour myself a cup. It didn't happen. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. They were like, go downstairs right now. Ah. Oh. But then. Then the injury happened. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Oh, it hurts to laugh. What did you Don't try take to do? away the laughter. I tried to lift this dude. <laughs> I was supposed to do a four person carry like everyone else because but we had low numbers. And we had one person on security and the one dude was like, I wanna lay down on the litter. 
And we we're I was the like heaviest dude. Heaviest dude. I wasn't going to tell him that. We we're supposed wanna... to carry him from the battlefield <laughs> like miles to a safer location, right? <laughs> like we ain't safe. I can't be safe if I'm trying to get you safe and I'm not safe and we ended up they ended up telling us we had to do a two person carry. So now we're distributing the weight amongst two folks. Of the heaviest dude. Of the heaviest dude. And I'm 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 not a strong person. <laughs> I'm not a strong person. Like if you go down, I'm not the one you want carrying you off to safety. You ain't the one. I'm not. Like you need your kids to get vaccinated. I got you. You need a head circumference. I got you. I'm the guy clicking and clacking. I'm the one in the in the building, like he said. But yeah, I went to go lift this person, two person carry. I was like, you know, I got this. I'll soldier on. I'll do it. I was like, ready, lift. One, two. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just felt something pop. Like, I really felt something pop in my left ribs. I was like, it's over. My day is done. You ended up having to go to the ER that day. I had to go to the ER. But I finished the entire training. You did, man. You... Like, and I told everybody, too. Guts. I was like, I really messed up my ribs. But I think people thought I was joking. Like I thought that everyone thought I was messing around or something. Like I was like I was like oh I was like oh man I really hurt my ribs. Everyone's like oh yeah <laughs> keep going buddy you got it. <laughs> you had to carry not just like not just that that guy but you had to carry me yeah onto a truck yeah and then you had to carry a two hundred pound mannequin yeah onto a helicopter yes and then back yeah it was just so it was like I felt like so embarrassed though because like I mean I didn't tell anybody really that I was hurt. So it just looked like I was weak as fuck. <laughs> like, it really just looked like I could. I wasn't. I haven't been lifting for years. Yeah, yeah. But then, oh, what? Did, oh, one of the instructors just walked up to me straight up afterwards because he saw how bad I was struggling. Because like, he's a I, big dude, small. Yeah, oh, he was a big dude, and he kind of walked up to me. He's like, you need to work out more. I was like, <laughs> imagine being in that situation. Like you're injured. Yeah. Literally went to the ER, diagnosed you with an injury. <laughs> yeah. And you, you get told you need to go work out. I'm like, you know what? This is like, welcome to your tape. Like, this is me like, you know what? I'm going to remember that for the rest of my life. I'm just going to be swole for the rest of my life. You're going to be swole. I'll be in the gym like three times a day. Do it. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Do it. And get strong. And then go to his office and be like. And bench press him. Hey, yo. <laughs> Chief, I've been working out. Yeah. <laughs> just like, hey, look, man. Look at these biceps. Can barely fit through the door. Strong. Yeah, but Chief is like 52 years old and yeah, he's, he's swole, bro. He's strong. He look like yeah. He looks really good. Like, oh, for real. I look at him and I was like, man, I want to look like that at 52. That's what I'm saying, man. I wish I could look like that now. I wish I could look like that now. I'm embarrassed. I'm 30. He got 22 years on me. Oh my god, yeah. But Joker is swole. Dude, that's why like that training overall was great. Like, it was intense. It was a really good training. But, like, I wish I didn't get hurt, like, right at the beginning. Because I feel like I would have had a better experience if I yeah. didn't hurt myself. Like, I was like, like, but what can I do in that situation? Like, what am I supposed to do? I just busted a rib. I was like, yeah. I don't know what's wrong. But then when we started doing the four-person carry, I was fine with my right arm. Like, I was fine because it was, like, my right. It was on my left side. But then after we loaded them onto the helicopter, once we loaded them off of the helicopter, spots reversed. Yeah. So I wasn't on the right side anymore. I was on the left side. And that was my left arm trying to hold the weight without, like, losing it. And I was about to lose it. Like, it was I like walked, 100 yards he had to carry. I had back walk, and forth? Yeah, back and forth. Down there, I was okay, I guess, ish. But then on the way back, I was, I was like, okay. Because I had to turn my body, and I ended up having to carry it with two hands. Again, that made me look even weaker because, like, I couldn't carry it with one. But... I just had to turn my body around and hold it with like mainly my right hand because I couldn't, I was just compensating for my left side being yeah. just dead. Like I was over it. And then after that, that's when Chief walked up to me and said, you need to work out more. Like, all right, you know what? This has just been a great experience. Great day. It's a great day being a medic. I am still sore today. For the U.S. Air Force. Who raw? That's not Air Force. Nah, I don't know. Aim that, high. I, fly, fight, win. That's right. That's right. <laughs> okay, I feel like now I got to talk about a little bit about this because, like, you know, like those sayings. Like, I, I feel like basic training was a fever dream to me. Like, you ever feel that way? I guess you're a little bit closer to basic than I am, but like, just a little bit. When I think about things that happened in basic, I really have to like convince myself that they really happened. <laughs> like, you yeah, know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we went through eight weeks of just like. Really like calculated movements. When when you eat, they tell you when to eat, sleep, breathe, shave your face, brush your teeth. Mm -hmm. Everything is just like wake up, go to bed. 
like it's something you see on TV. Yeah. Like, but then you're there, and like I had to convince myself that like this really happened. Yeah. Like not like the basic stuff like that, but I had to convince myself that we woke up at like 5 a.m. to go do a road run, and we ran all around the base screaming Jody's in our hoodies. Like we had just gotten our chance mm-hmm. to get our hoodies, mm-hmm. and I was like, and then worked out, and then worked out right afterwards. Right afterwards, <clears throat> again, it's just like, did that happen? Yeah, I think it's like you're going through so much trauma. Yeah. Your body literally tells you, like, forget this. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as you get out, it's like you... You're, like, you're not really supposed happen? to remember this. Yeah, you kind of put yourself in this sleep mode almost. Yeah. I don't know what that's called psychologically. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not either. Like the, I think it's, the key word is matrix. Like, feels like Oh, snap. We were in the matrix, y'all. Because we can't really like prove that it didn't happen. Can't prove it didn't. Can't happen. prove that it did Can't happen. Can't prove it did happen. I mean, we got a coin though. We did get a coin. But like, what if you now? Now that we're talking about this, and go pick up, go find your <laughs> coin. You pick it up, and it just like disintegrates in your hand. Like you know too much. Like oh god. <laughs> <laughs> we do really know too much. We do know too much. And and that's why we can't go to places like have. All right. So we went to IHOP. <laughs> After this training, <laughs> perfect, perfect transition. <laughs> perfect. We know too much. We know too much. We were at IHOP. We, we we know too much. Okay. So after this field training, mm-hmm. where we were basically, I mean, we we are not in Iraq. <laughs> we're in Florida. But we're, we're in Florida. <laughs> but the simulation felt, oh yeah, as if we, we were, were. We were not at we Camp Cupcake. There. We were not at Camp Cupcake. That's what he called it. Camp Cupcake. We were not at Weenie Hut Jr. Yeah. We were in the real thing. We were. After that, we um, somehow ended up at International House of Pancakes. Yes. uh, One of America's. Finest establishments. Finest establishments. Yes. Absolutely. And we have this uh, wonderful server. Yes. Raitress. Her name will go. For the story's sake is Karen. (laughs) For the story's. Yeah. For the story's sake, her name is Karen. Yep. Karen knew too much. Karen knew, wait, and she just, she had this urge to just let everyone else know too Tell much. Tell us everything. Yeah. Right. So I think people get excited as soon as they, if, especially if they see you in uniform, they get excited. They're like, oh my God. They have to tell you their story. I have to tell you my story. My you nephew. The Air Force? My great grandson was into doing the thing. I'm like, okay, you know what, Karen? Yeah. Karen? Let's relax. I don't we don't, know your great grandson. Wait, I don't know him. And I probably never will probably know him. Probably never will. And he probably is not even in the Air Force anymore. Probably not. He probably retired. Probably. He probably doesn't live in the same state as you anymore. But she told us about X or Blank's name and told us his we'll first. Call him Jared. Jared. First, last name, where they worked. Birthday. Birth. So basically, <laughs> social, social D-O-D-O-D security D-O-D-O-D number. Everything. Where they're currently located, where they're going, mm-hmm. how many vehicles are traveling to that location. Yep. Told us everything about this man's <laughs> life, <laughs> and all we can do is just sit there, like, mm-hmm. I'm like, you're not a need to know person. Like, yo, can I get my pancake? Like, or, like <laughs> right? I'm looking kind of hungry. We just went through war. We just went through war. I want a pancake. My ribs hurt, man. And some I bacon. I don't care about Jared, man. Like, and that's not me being rude. It's just like, why do I need to know this? We don't. Like, you're trying to make small talk. Like, that's cool. Because normally, like, waitresses or waiters or anything like that, they like to make that conversation. Like, hey, like, thank you all for your service. Whatever, you know. And I don't even warrant that. Yeah. But when you just, you just put on a clinic. You put on a show. Karen put on a show. Oh, man. Yeah, she was talking. She told us everything. Yeah. So. The whole thing. If you're in the military, there are people who are need to know. Uh Uh-huh. And there are people who who don't need to know. Uh Uh-huh. Like. Karen didn't need to know. It is perfectly okay. To tell your mom, dad, brother, sister, you know, what you doing, your job, whatever, you excited Absolutely. about it. Be excited about it. Like, I love working in where we work. I love the people we work with. I love doing what we do. Absolutely. But I don't tell everybody where I'm at, my DOD number. Nope. Where I'm going. Where I'm going. My family members. My like, family. You, that's that's where I draw the line, You don't bro. need to be doing that. You don't need to know. Because you might have a Karen in your family. Yes. Who might tell the wrong person? They're going to just overshare. <laughs> overshare. Like some shady character comes in and you're like, my blank blank is going here, going there. They live here. Like you put putting a, like not, like obviously like you're not putting a real target on anybody, but you really don't know. You don't know. You don't know. Like someone could definitely, definitely take that and be like, oh, wait, wait, wait. you said, what were they? Right. How old are they? How tall are they? Are they strong? Right. <laughs> like, are they strong? They, how many kids they got? Yeah. Okay, cool. Where, where do they go to school? Right. 
I low key felt so uncomfortable. I was like, "Yo, Karen, I just I already ordered my crepes, man. I just want my pancakes and my omelet." That's all we were there for. I forced myself to forget Karen, son, nephew. Yeah, I whatever. Even Jared, know. Jared. <laughs> I, for, I I had to forget. Yeah. What all she told us, but you don't need to be telling everybody everything. No, you really no. don't. And that's that's where it kind of got to that point where we were like. Okay, that now we're oversharing. We are oversharing. We're oversharing with Karen. With Karen. That could be an episode. It could be an a episode. episode. A whole episode. But like, it doesn't stop there, though. <laughs> because Karen, after proceeding to overshare with us, we got to this establishment at 11 o'clock. We ordered basically right away. We didn't get our food. Right away. 12.30. An hour and a half. We waited. And there's only five of us. There's and we had patients at one. Yeah. Like, we had places to <laughs> we be. Had, we had people to see. And there was probably maybe three groups total in yeah. this IHOP. I don't know how and, and what universe it takes an hour and a half to get five people food. An hour and a half later. Think about the defect. Uh, in basic, we feed 800 people in like an hour. <laughs> Quick. Efficient. Efficiency. Military knows how to do it. That's right. But now we're in IHOP and we're starting to get a little impatient because we have patients to see. Like, and so we're like, all right, cool, whatever. And the food finally comes out. Uh, we didn't talk for like five minutes. Everybody finished their food in like 10 minutes, like flat. Not this because we were like, like munching. This dude ate a whole crepe, bacon, some eggs in like three seconds. Yeah. I'm telling you. Stacked like- my plate and I just sat there patiently and waited for everyone else to finish. I was sitting on the middle or I was like all the way in the booth too. So I literally couldn't go anywhere. I was just sitting there like, you done? You done? It's all hilarious right. how fast he ate his food. You know? I eat fast. That's My wife tells me I eat too no, fast. No, I was hungry. I always eat fast. I don't know why. Like, we'll go out to eat, like, the dinner with my wife, and we'll go, like, we'll go to, like, Olive Garden. Like, so for her birthday, we went to Olive Garden, and yeah. we went over there, or for, like, a lunch. Yeah. And she ordered her food, and I ordered my food, and I eat so fast. <laughs> I don't know why. It's, like, my curse. But, like, I know I'm eating fast, too, but it's, like, almost like a game to me. I'm like, I want to just see how fast I can eat everything, because I'm hungry. Yeah. But I'm not, like, I don't know. I ate really, really fast, right? So I finished all my, my whole plate, everything. Fries, everything. Steak, gone. Yeah. Drink, gone. And I'm, I am stacked my plates and I'm sitting there waiting. And she's just sitting there eating. We ain't seen in like 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> After we got our food, we... She oh, snap, I said back. her real name. <laughs> Amy, Karen, what's Karen, her name? What's her name? Karen, what's her name? Karen, I don't know. Yeah, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't seen Karen in 30 minutes. Nope. She ain't came back. We're just waiting on our checks. Just we're patiently like, waiting. Sitting there waiting and we're like really pressed for time at this point. Yeah. We finally end up getting our checks. She comes back like sprinting <laughs> out of breath, <laughs> out of nowhere. Hey guys, okay, who had the pancakes? <laughs> Starts handing us our checks. And we're like, oh my god! Like this process took way too long <laughs> just to get the check. Like you could have left them on the table and let us figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, here y'all checks. There you go. We'll meet y'all up front. Okay, nope, didn't happen. Okay, uh, I'm thinking. Hold up, we ain't seen Karen in like an hour. Nope. Why is she coming back out of breath? Like, where did she go? Like, IHOP is not big. It's not that big. There's like, she went from here to the kitchen to grab the food and then from the kitchen to here to give us our checks. Like, it is not far. Why are you out of breath, Karen? Like, mm. So then we finally get up to the counter. We're about to pay our tickets. All of us. We got individual tickets. There's five of us total. So we get through two out of the five. <laughs> and then she loses it. This is, this is where Karen has the meltdown of a century. <laughs> Completely loses it. <laughs> so our boy Zabora, he goes up there with his card and he gives the card and everything like that. And she puts it in the she- machine. And then she goes, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> where did it go? Where did it go? It didn't print. And so she's like, I, I ran the card, but it didn't print. Like, oh, my God. Like, the receipt didn't print out or something like that. And so she's full-blown panic. No one is laughing, by the way. We're pissed. N- nobody's laughing. We just, Everyone's just sitting we here just like, want to go. Oh, my God. Like, we we just want to go to work. out of here. And, of course, this happens. No one's laughing. And she keeps saying, stop laughing. It's not funny. It's not funny. And we're like, who's laughing? Like, nobody thinks this is funny. We're trying to go. <laughs> Looking around like... Who was laughing? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, she had a full meltdown. But then this is where it gets really confusing because she pulls his card out and runs to the kitchen. Before that, she's like, I need something. She's like tapping this. Oh, she's like, it's not working. I, I need something. I don't know where it went. I, I, just, I need help. I need help. I need a I need manager. manager. 
<laughs> I need something. I'm like, Shit, we're just sitting, we're standing in the back of the line, and we're literally sitting there just kind of like looking at each other, like, oh my god, like what is going on right now? And then we look at him and say, we had the same idea in the same moment. We gonna talk about this on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna talk. About- <laughs> we gonna talk about this on the podcast for sure. Imagine her in a high pressure situation oh, job. God, like. Imagine if she was like, uh, I'm trying to think, like, what would be a perfect example of like, oh, God, maybe what we do? A surgeon. Could you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> like someone's like bleeding out. Like, oh my God, apply pressure. I need something. I need someone. <laughs> Dr. Phil. Like, find somebody. I don't right. Know. It's like, wait, you're the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> like, that was her job. That was your job. Like, how long have you been working here? But like, I, f- I just, I-, I felt bad for a minute. But then it just kind of got too much. I was like, okay, yeah. now it's getting a lot. Like yeah. when she ran to the kitchen looking for a manager, she runs back out to the thing with, and she took his card to the kitchen. She probably went back there, wrote down his numbers on his card, probably, maybe, I don't know. Comes back to the front, and then she tries to run it again, and it's like, I don't know where it is. It's gone. It's disappeared. It's, it's gone. gone. So Mars like, man, I'll just pay cash. I got ten bucks. Says no, you got four dollars. I'm like. Yeah, bro, I got you. I gave him four ones, whatever. And then he goes up there and he's about to pay with cash. And she goes, it's gone. Just, I can't. Just get out of here. Just, just leave. It. <laughs> like, just keep it. Just go. Leave. Like, literally at this point, like, not she tears. Was, she's like hysterical. <laughs> like, just get out of here. It's gone. I don't know what to do. And we're just all looking around like, okay. Yeah. Like, bye, Karen. <laughs> I See, the thing I don't understand is I worked at restaurants in college. Yep. Like I've waited tables. Oh yeah. It's not. It's never that, that deep. deep. It's never that deep. It's never that deep. It's always like, oh, I apologize. Give me one second. Right. That's all it takes. And if if let's say you have a table, I always remembered like if the kitchen was running slow, mm-hmm. like if I just communicated, if you hey, just tell them. Our, our kitchen is backed up. Yeah, it's we gonna, apologize. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be about this much time. Can I bring y'all something? Some extra a- yep. like appetizer? Something we do have ready. Yeah. Just giving them do. a little bit of peace of mind so they're not can just sitting there pissed. Can I get you a salad? Can I yeah. get you? Communicate. Like That's it. Homie disappeared for an hour and a half. Hour and a half. Out of breath, too. Out of, and came like, where did she out run? Like, where did she go? Like, why she, was she ran running? a track meet. Yeah, why was she running? I don't know. It's I have No idea. I don't know. It's not that big. It's like, not that deep. Perfect example of that, bro. I used to work at Ross. I used to work at retail. Same thing. Yeah. So like if I we used to ring up some like big ticket transactions. Like people would go into Ross and really drop like a grand. Like I'm not like I, I never thought that would be possible. But they would go to Ross, Why? a discount clothing store, and drop like a band, like a whole band. I'm like, oh my God. But anyways, sometimes if they ring up a too high of a transaction, the computer will start to like shut down on itself pretty much. Cause that's like a lot for the sit. Like it's like a hundred some items. Yeah. And so what happened to me is I literally scanned like, oh God, hundreds of items. And I ring it up and it's like grand and 64, whatever, some change. I ring it up. I'm like, cash or card. They're like, oh, I'm pay card. I was like, okay, thank God. <laughs> so <laughs> I ring it up. I put their card in and the system just frozen, just shut down on me. And so I'm sitting there and I'm like, mm, payment didn't go through. Like it didn't go through and my computer is just like, it's done. Yeah. And they're like, well, what, what the, you know, I waited here for however long, scanning the items. I'm like, let me just call my manager up here real quick. Because at Ross, you worked at the front door pretty mm-hmm. much. And the manager sat in the back office. Yeah, yeah. So I had to call my manager. And, hey, can you come up here real quick? My computer shut down. Like we might have to like either split up the transaction, do something different, whatever. And then came up there and then the person's losing it right like losing it like oh my god like why didn't it go through like it better not have charged my car xyz whatever and i'm like communication i'm just telling you hey my manager's coming up here right now they're gonna restart the computer we'll get you all figured out squared away all this and that and then they're like okay you know that's fine that's fine but it helps you even now as a technician right you're running an hour behind your provider's moving slow yeah hey uh i'm sorry apologize for your wait uh provider's gonna be about 20 minutes behind today so uh, you know please be mindful of that when you're waiting out here for extra long you know we apologize it's not our fault but we'll take care of you when we can you know yeah we got three siblings that all walked in with different last names mm. <laughs> the three for from hell the three for from hell <laughs> <laughs> oh that's gonna be a minute I that apologize. was a nightmare just communicate that's it communicate and i feel like a lot of people struggle with that which is weird like i don't get it i, I mean think I, people are afraid of like what somebody else would do like they don't realize that they're probably gonna just be like oh, okay cool thanks for letting me know yeah there's just like nervousness about it but i feel like also a lot of people haven't been in that like in a situation before the military if that makes sense like you work retail you wait tables yeah. you go to college whatever you do you're gonna have some type of life experience that helps you learn how to manage those situations effectively yeah. 
And unless you've had those experiences, you're going to be trying to figure it out now. And it's like, you're going to struggle. Yeah. You're going to struggle. No. I think something that people don't realize is that, like, if you are not in that specific field. Right. And you're getting a service done. Mm -hmm. That person in that field is essentially an expert. Like, they know way more than I do. Mm. Like, Yeah. Like, I don't. If I didn't have the experience of waiting tables, I wouldn't know what it's like to be in the back. Right. You know, I wouldn't know what it's like. So so when somebody comes up to me and they calm my nerves, they, they tell me, hey, it's going to be a little bit. I'm sorry. Our kitchen is backed up. All right. You the expert. That's it. It's all good. Like, I, y'all cool, bro. I got you. Like, no worries. Thanks for the thanks for the heads up. But maybe like because that's that's where the fear comes into play. Because if you walked up to someone like that like, waited tables before and they tell you like, hey, this is going on. You're going to be like. I get that. I understand. Yeah. But then, like, you're going to have somebody that comes in there, and they're just like, I don't care. I want my food. Those are the people that cause people to have issues communicating those things in the future. Yeah. Like, you're going to, but you're just going to have some people it's like true. that. But I think that, that's, again, that also teaches you, like, what's, what to expect in certain situations. Yeah. Like, you know, like, you're not always going to have someone that understands everything. That's right. But you have to find a way to communicate it effectively enough to the people that don't understand will understand. Yeah. Or at least deal with it yeah. because you gave them the information you ain't just let, let them go blind <laughs> yeah that is something i honestly have not always been really good at is communication really yeah mm. i think that's why my marriage ended <laughs> it was because i was not the best communicator well, that like, ain't no like, to be honest yeah and uh but honestly in my failure i learned like yo if i want if i want to get this right someday right you know if i want to be better i'm gonna have to you're gonna have to work on I'm it i'm gonna have to work on it i'm gonna yeah. have to learn how to communicate effectively no that's that's yeah. super fair though but again like not everybody goes through that but those who do go through that they understand it mm -hmm. they're like but a lot of people aren't willing to acknowledge their their shortcomings their faults you know like they'll be like if something ends or like something goes doesn't go your way or whatever, they're always gonna be like, oh, you know what? Like it is what it is. Like they're not gonna like. L not a lot of people self reflect and go, yeah. damn. Like what could I have done better? That's how I am. Like especially at work. Like if I don't get something or I don't get put up for something, I'll yeah. ask directly. I understand. I get it. Like I didn't go up for a reason. Yeah. I just need to know what that reason is, so I can correct that in myself and get better. Like. Mm -hmm. I don't know how people aren't obsessed with self growth. Like yeah. honestly, like how can you not want to be better? Like you yeah. like someone tells you you're trash at something, you're gonna be like, that just lights a fire in me. Like me I want to get man. better. Yeah. Like oh man, you, you trash. Oh word. Like all right, bet I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna get better. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. show you. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's a there's a there's this book by Jordan Peterson, Twelve Rules for Life. Okay. Have you read it? No, I haven't. It's so good. That sounds it. like a book I need to read. It is so good. One of his rules is um, tell the truth or at least don't lie. Mm. And um, and it's because when we lie, not only are we we're we're essentially setting ourselves up for failure when we lie. Yeah. And you're not being like it's okay to it's not okay to be dishonest with others. Mm -hmm. But when you're dishonest with others, you're also being dishonest with yourself. And when you're dishonest with yourself, you're setting yourself up to fail. Yeah, that that light keeps That's going in messing and out. with me. But no, that was good. The light keeps going in and out. I'm glad we got the ring lights. Same. But no, that's crazy. Yeah, that's yeah. like, that sounds like a book I need to read. Like yeah. self-growth and like personal development. Yeah. Like, that's cool to me. Like, I literally just took a class. Like, I'm in school right now. I took a, a class called, literally, the class was called leadership. Mm. That's what it's called. Like, I've never, I was like, what the hell, damn classes like this? <laughs> like, I, I'm taking a, I'm in a business degree in healthcare administration. So I never thought in a million years I would be taking a class called leadership. And so I was like, yeah, bro, like, I understood that class to an entirely different extent than I feel like most yeah. people did. I was, I was watching the discussion boards I was like because I'm constantly in like not I don't want to say battle, but like I'm playing this game with leadership all the time. Like we yeah. all are. Like we have constant rotation of leadership in different styles all the time. Mm -hmm. But like there's there's like so many different types of leadership styles that I didn't even realize existed because of my own personal philosophy, I'm a servant leader. Yeah. That's what I've always been and that's yeah. what I continue to want to be yeah. because you always just look out for everyone else. Yeah. But you can't do that unless you look take care of yourself first. Mm -hmm. And that was something that I really found out through this course, but then I learned about like 20 different styles of leadership. And I've seen them all. Like, I've seen them all already. Yeah. Like you, And you know exactly. Like, there's not just like, oh, you kind of fit in this category. You kind of fit in this category. It's like yeah. you are one or the other. Yeah. And I, all the flight chiefs and different, like, leaders that I've had or even, like, been or seen, 
it's just it makes so much more sense now to me because a lot of the, I had a really big problem with like blaming other people for my shortcomings. Mm. That was my biggest mistake. My first two years in the Air Force, like if some yeah. if something didn't go my way, yeah. I would blame everybody else. Yeah, like oh leadership's out to get me they don't like me they don't see me as this golden child like they you know i made i got whatever paperwork or whatnot and i'm like they're out to get me yeah instead of being like dang what did i do wrong and if i even if i didn't agree or didn't like the way that they presented it to me i should have still taken that time to self-reflect yeah. and be like can i ask you honestly like what did i do that caused me to get to this point and then how can i avoid that in the future that's why I'm huge on feedback. Like mm. if I'm doing something wrong, tell me straight to my face yeah. right now because I will not take it any type of way. Yeah. And that's only going to help me progress. Absolutely. If someone tells me like, oh, you suck. <laughs> I'm like, okay, cool. Why? Like yeah. what did I do wrong? Yeah. And then they'll tell me and I'll be like, oh, thank you. Thank you for the feedback. Yeah. Because now I can just get better. Because you're I, passionate about personal growth, man. That's it. That's what's going to make you great. That's bro. it. Yeah. One day. Yeah. Getting this podcast up there. We got 41 subscribers last time I checked. Hey, we made it. We made it. We did it somewhere. We made it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't all the way. We ain't all the way there yet. Mm. Oh, dude. Uh, Those. While we're on leadership, bro. I want yeah. To, my, one of my favorite like leadership quotes it says uh, John Quincy Adams said, um, "If you can inspire others to do more, to see more, to dream more, and to become more, then you're in fact a leader." Oh man. Like you don't need a title. You don't need a position. Mm. All you have to have is the ability to inspire others to do more, to see more, yeah. to dream more, and to become more. Oh. And that doesn't take much. No, it doesn't. It doesn't take much. But like, you have to. But you have to have it. You have to have it. Like, absolutely. I, I, nobody's nobody's gonna understand what I just said. You have to have it. But like <laughs> you, if you don't have that in you to it, like you don't learn that. Mm -hmm. Like you. You either have it or you don't. Like it's just, it's like the mamba mentality. <laughs> like yeah. you don't learn the mamba mentality. Either you have it or you don't. Like at yeah. the end of the day, and like that's that's yeah. for real though. So not everybody can be a leader. Some no. some some people are just really great followers. Yeah, and that's but, and you need those. Kind and of that's people. good. It yeah. is good. We can't have if every single person was a leader, then we would have this. It would be chaos. It would mm. be utter chaos because you would have this, these group of people just clashing all the clashing time. all the time, mm -hmm. lack of communication, and be like, wait a minute, that one person just said to do this, you just said to do that, yep. and it, it just brings utter confusion. Right. And so to have the self awareness to know, like, all right, I I either have this in me, I have the ability to inspire others to do more, mm -hmm. to see more, to dream more, and become more, or I don't. And I can follow the person and help support that person. Yeah. Like, yo, I can be a good number two. Right. I can. It's like, that's and it's need. okay. Yeah. And that's okay. It's okay to be a good number two. I had, again, bro. Like, this is like, <laughs> this is stuff that like I've grown to know now. Yeah. But like, I've always been a leader in my like early life, like yeah. high school, even out of high school a little bit, like jobs, everything like that. I've always like, because I've wanted to be that. Yeah. Like, I wanted to be the person that was like. You need something, I got you. I got your back. And like that was how I wanted to lead, though. I didn't want to be like, you do this. Never was I ever want to be like, you do this, you do that, go here, go there. My goal is to make everyone's life easier yeah. at the end of the day, right? And but I'm like, oh my God. So I'm just going to backtrack even further now because I feel like this is a great topic. I feel yeah. like this is a great conversation. But I had the goal out of high school that I wanted to be a teacher. I wanted to, I wanted to teach. I wanted to educate because of exactly that same reason. Because I feel like if you can like make a difference in someone's life or inspire them to dream more, mm -hmm. inspire them to achieve their goals, inspire them to want more for themselves, yeah. then that would be real change that I could affect at the lowest level. Yeah. Because if I put more people like that out there in the real world, yeah. there's going to be a lot more leaders out there. And Absolutely. like it's going to be like people are going to succeed more. Yeah. But then through that process, I, I, the reason I wanted to be a teacher was because the same reason I want to be, a, I've always wanted to be a leader because in high school and, or in school or anything like that, you've had really good teachers and you've had really bad ones. And you remember the really good ones. And you remember the really good ones and you yeah. remember how the really bad ones made you feel. Yeah. And like, that for me was like, that's what I want to do. I want to be everything that the, my favorite teachers were mm -hmm. and nothing like the ones that I didn't like. Yep. Shout out Miss Heckathorn, Halton High School. Mr. Miller, shout out to you. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Everyone's got one, man. Everyone's yeah. got one. At yeah. least one. At least one. Because there's multiple. But yeah. that's the one for sure that made 
made me realize that. Shout out Coach Mitchell. <laughs> Coach Mitchell. <laughs> Shout out Miss Pop. That's, that's all y'all, man. We remember. Look at us now, yeah. man. Look at us now. Oh, my God. But that also transitioned for me in the Air Force. Like, when I joined, I had that dog in me from the get-go. I was like, I want to I want to be the leader. I want to yeah. be the leader. Yeah. I was a really bad follower. And that mm-hmm. was my my big problem. Yeah. So my first feedback with my supervisor, my first supervisor, I said that straight up. I was like, I'm just an A1C, mm-hmm. but I want it so bad. Yeah. And I'm going to do anything I can to learn how to be a follower effectively so I can be a better leader one day. Yeah. But that's my goal. Like, I'm not going to just settle to be a follower. Oh, my God. That light is going to piss me off. <laughs> but that was my – I told him in my feedback session. I was like, hey, man, like, I'm a bad follower. Straight up. I want to learn to be a good follower. And then he made it his mission to put me in situations that I would normally be spiteful of. Yeah. And put me in a situations where he's like, hey, help me support this person. And I'm like, in my head at the time, I was like, but it should be me. Yeah. But then I had to realize the hard way. You know what? You're right. Push mm. them. Push them to be great. Dang. What do you think that is, bro, that like keeps people from being good leaders like or being good followers? Is it? I think it's pride. Is it the ego? Pride? I think it's got to be one of the two. But for like for me, I know that it was like, it was just this idea that like you got to learn how to be a team player if you want to make it anywhere. So like the, the quote that I said the other day, Absolutely. if you want to be, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Say it again. Say it slow. <laughs> if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Go together. My co- coach Anderson, you said that stuck with me to this day and he was talking about that's what he was talking about to me and that quote literally stuck with me since high school till now all the way through such a good quote man that's what and i told him that i was like i wanted to be in this position where people counted on me Mm -hmm. not like i didn't want to be that one i was like hey this is a real they're really good pushing Mm -hmm. other people but then i realized that that was my biggest flaw as a person in a military experience or even just in life like if i wasn't happy for my people going up yeah. winning doing crazy things doing things yeah. then i'm a part of the problem mm-hmm. i've learned that now yeah and all i now all i want all i want to do is see people do well yeah yeah you know it's all i want but to it do. honestly takes a good leader to cast a vision right that people can grab a hold of for sure to say like i i can run with that right you know what i'm saying right like and not everyone is a great vision caster. Not everyone can inspire that change, that change. Or, that, or that vision. Like you yeah. said earlier, that, that quote that you was talking about, because that's that's real though. Like, how do you how do you expect people to follow you if you can't like gather people to mm-hmm. to go towards like galvanize the troops, inspire a shared vision? Yeah, that's part of my class. It's one of my cl- one of my one of my things. Literally in class, leadership <laughs> class, inspired a shared vision. It's the hardest thing to do as a leader. And I was like, what? Like, mm. you can't inspire a shared vision. Like, what does that mean? I keep turning on this light. <laughs> but no, like, I was like, I really sat with that. And it was like, how do you inspire a, a shared vision? You enable others to act and you motivate them to challenge the process. Mm-hmm. Enabling though, like that, that, mm-hmm. that you could also like change that word from enabling to empowering them. Yeah easily people feel more capable of following a vision or jumping on board something when they feel empowered to do it right you know it's it's good man i did not expect for us to go down this i didn't either but i these are the type of intellectual conversations (laughs) that like i talk about this like i'm growing up all the time i talk about this like we i would have a conversation with this like this with like a couple of my friends and i was like bro we should we should have recorded that (laughs) We should have filmed that. Yeah. This, this was a great conversation. I, I saw uh, Paul George on JJ Reddick's podcast, and he asked him this question because Paul George is an NBA basketball player, for those of you who don't know. NBA basketball player was played college ball at like Fresno State, wasn't like highly recruited, but his second year in the NBA like blew up, mm. like exploded. PG-13. Um, PG-13. Um, they went to the Eastern Conference Finals, faced the Miami Heat when that LeBron. Was when he was the Pacers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When LeBron was with the Miami Heat, yeah, and um, had some, some really intense battles. Yeah, and he was the he was the number one dude in Indianapolis, and um, and he asked or JJ asked this question like, what What's up with everybody joining up 
to be on a super team? Like, what made you what made you want to do that? And he said, bro, he, this was so good. He he said, I had to, like, sit back and really reflect, like, yeah, I can be the number one on any team. Yeah. But if I want to play at the best, highest level and compete with the best in the world for championships, I might have to accept the fact that I might be a good number two. And that's okay. And that's okay. Like, is it? And I think that's a question we all have to ask ourselves. Like, if if we want to compete with the best, no matter what our profession is, no matter where we're at, if we want to make a big impact, do we have the self-awareness enough to say, I'm okay if I'm not a number one? Yeah. Dude, this is hitting so deep. (laughs) Like, this is it. Like, this is Like, that's exactly exactly my state of mind for like the last year yeah like and it's not it has nothing to do with the fact that you couldn't be the number one because he was very capable very capable of being yeah. the number one guy anywhere he wanted mm-hmm. to go but then like some people are just like they gotta some people are reachers and some people are settlers in certain in certain yeah, yeah, cases yeah. right like if you're okay with like settling with being like a number two, then you better be the best number two that you could possibly be. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you got to be that person. Like Absolutely. so, when that number one is struggling, you're the support system. I got your back. Let's go. Yeah. If you can motivate them to keep their head straight, then you're doing your job, and that and that's okay. Yeah, it's like, do you want to be a big fish in a small pond, and never really see anything great, mm-hmm. or do you want to join go the big <laughs> pond? <laughs> if you want to go far, go together. Go together. If you want to. Dang, this is getting good. Oh my god, this is getting really good. Oh my god. But he's like good. Paul George though, like I'm trying to think, what was it saying? Because he said that about you know, I wanna be that's why I people like Kevin Durant, I don't like him. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, cause cause he doesn't have that mindset that Paul George has. And I don't think many do. I really mm. don't think that many people have that, like, I'm okay with being the number two guy, right? Yeah. Like LeBron, never be a role player in his life till the, yeah. till the end of his career. He'll never be a role player because he he wants to be dominant. He wants to be the guy. But he makes everybody else. But he elevates him others, better. and like that's exactly it. He's a phenomenal. He's number a one. natural born leader in that position. Yes, like everyone who knows they're about to go play with LeBron, they know they're about to be competing for championships. Right, because he's been to what ten finals appearances, mm-hmm. right? Like he's he's got the ability to galvanize, absolutely. Not just not just the fifteen guys with him, an entire organization. Right. Like the Lakers are garbage, but we talk about the Lakers because, because LeBron. of LeBron James. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> he's got that. He's, he's got, got that in him. That he's he's a different case, but people like Kevin Durant, like I'm <laughs> saying, he didn't go to the Suns to make them better. He went to the Suns because they were already good, and he just wanted to take them to a chip and win. I think KD is a little bit uh, misunderstood, though. Mm. He's a little. I, can I can't wait he, to hear this. I can say he's a little bit misunderstood. <laughs> How? I don't know. You just think he is? I just think he is. But but KD has the ability. Okay, he can play with everybody. KD can play with everybody. But he's got to get his first. Nah, bro. Last night he scored twenty three points in his debut. Had nine rebounds. Devin Booker scored thirty. It was like thirty seven or thirty nine. Like Devin Booker was the number one guy, but you can put KD on literally any team. He just wants to ball, bro. He wants to. I think he just wants to hoop. But why can't he do that in a different situation? I think he's got different leadership capabilities than LeBron James. I think he's a pure scorer, and I think he wants to get his buckets and he wants to contribute to a win. That he doesn't. It. That's where it gets me. Where he's like, it doesn't matter where he's playing because. If he goes to a shitty team, he's gonna have to produce very high numbers, and he knows that. But he can. Yeah. But he can. Yeah. If he goes to a offensively strong team like the Suns, yeah. he still wants to get buckets. But I think it's a mentality thing. I think like like LeBron's got that alpha. In him. Explain he's got, explain he's, the rules from OKC to Golden State. Justify that move from OKC I to Golden State. I can't justify that move. But why would he do it? Like if you had because if you think he's he misunderstood, wanted a chip, bro. So, he wanted a chip, and so he joined a team. So that, he knew to get. He went. He that's that's my problem. KD is not an alpha, but all those. I feel like all the chips that he wins from the rest from now on, <laughs> and and the one all the ones that he has won. He's only won one, right? 
No, no he won two. Won, won two, two with NBA Golden State? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, if, okay. Those chips, I feel like they don't count. I feel like they're not, they don't count. I don't feel like they elevate his legacy the same way that the chips that uh, LeBron won in Cleveland elevated his legacy. The chip that he won in Cleveland was legendary. That was legendary, right? right? But because that's what he, he did. He took a team that, that, that was hadn't ass. won in years, <clears throat> decades, Ye- 50 plus. 50 plus years. And he brought him a chip. And he brought him a chip. And he beat the Golden State Warriors. And he beat the Golden State Warriors. The best team ever assembled. Right. Seven and that was the team that drafted him. So it was almost like redemptive. Yeah. It was a beautiful story. He's like, I'm going to bring y'all a chip. And, and he delivered. Yeah. But Kevin Durant was like, I want a chip. I'm going to go to the best team in the league. I think it's a mentality thing, bro. Like That's soft. I agree. I don't, <laughs> I don't disagree with that. That's I don't soft. disagree with that. I would have much, like, I think it would have been so much more fulfilling for KD to have stayed in OKC and tried again with Russell Westbrook because they were they were up on the Golden State Warriors that year. And they almost beat the Heat, too. Yeah. They, they back were, then, like, way further back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, we, I don't think people would be talking about KD the way that they do. If he stayed, he stayed in OKC. Yeah. They would have won the chip. And I think it's a mentality thing. They would have won multiple you, chips. I bet you KD knows he's a good number two. No, he's not trying to be the alpha dog. Because even when he went to Brooklyn, bro, it was Kyrie's team. Yes, he said it, bro. He said it. Himself. He'll say anything. He'll say anything he to make it. it seem like you know why he said that? He's not an alpha. You know why he said that about Kyrie? He said Kyrie is the number one. You know why he said that? So if they lose, it's Kyrie's team. Some people don't he, want the responsibility of being the leader. But he but that's that's his problem. He's not it's not something that he can control because he's a natural born number one. Period. No, I don't, I don't he's the best I can't scorer. Say that. He's the best pure no, scorer of all time. You can be the time. best player on the team and not be the leader. So then he's. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> okay. Chris Paul okay. is not the best when player play, on the Phoenix Suns. Oh, but, but he is the, the alpha dog. He is the vet in the room, bro. I'm taking Iguodala. <laughs> Iguodala. Iggy. Was not the best player. Draymond Green, not the best player on the Golden State Warriors. He's not he's, the leader. He's the voice, no. bro. Up until the day <laughs> he punched Jordan Poole that in the is face. Crazy. No. It's, up until he punched it's Steph's team. It's Steph's team. Yeah, but Steph is okay to defer. Like Steph knows he's the best. Pl- he's one of the best players. He's the, in the world. best player on that he's, team. He he is by far the best player on that team. But he is he's confident enough to. Hey, yo, Clay's hot. I'm gonna give Clay the ball. But that's the leader. He controls that whole team. If he's having a good night, he's give me the ball. Vocally if he's not though, vocally though, he don't say much. He's vocally, the baby face assassin. He don't he need to say anything. His his <laughs> to speak for himself. Just because Draymond's loud, <laughs> don't mean he's the leader. No, I think. Uh, I mean, I, I I've heard them say this. Like they're like Draymond the leader. He's in charge. Yeah, man. Dr- that's self appointed. You ain't. He told everyone, I'm the leader. I'm the big dog around here. And he showed it to Jordan Poole. He said, mm, give notice, me that wombo combo. Notice how, like, whenever in the beginning of the season. Sorry, we love to talk about basketball. I know. We keep we, reverting. We, we always go back to basketball. That's okay. I but, think that's okay. We're going to bring it right back. Yeah, we're going to bring so it back. Stay with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Notice how it, in the off season, in the beginning of the season, it was rocky for the Golden State Warriors because Draymond punched. The chemistry was off. <laughs> the chemistry was up. They've been able to stay above 500 after the All Star game, and now they're rolling, bro. Mm. They rolling, man. I wouldn't say Draymond right now is the vocal leader, but historically, over the goal, for the Golden State Warriors, he's been the vocal leader. You think him without, and Andre Iguodala? You think they don't win all the chips if they don't have Draymond? Oh, I think it's very different. Like, who would you replace him with? But I'm saying, like, do you, if, because if, he fits that if system Draymond so well. Wasn't on the Golden State Warriors ever. Do you think they still win those championships? Here's what I think. I think I think that you always have to have the dude that does the dirty work. Well, absolutely. And Draymond is not afraid. He's not afraid to get up in somebody's face. Absolutely. He's not afraid to go up and do the dirty work but and I think, get the boards. Let's go back even further. The Bulls, right? Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman. He was that player for them. He was yeah, the, absolutely. I'll do the dirty they work. They don't get past I'll the bad boy boards. Pistons without Rodman. But that's where I, that's where I asked the question. If, without Rodman, does Mike still bring him chips? I don't think so, bro. He's got to have that peace. He's got to have that peace. You got to have that person on your team. But he won three chips before Dennis Rodman. 
Bro, he's 91, 92, 93. But he had a piece that was like a Rodman. I believe it was Horace Grant. It was Oakley. Oakley. Oh, and then Horace Grant. He was a bad dude. <laughs> Oakley was a bad dude. He got old. But he wasn't like. Bro, he was a bad man. He did the dirty work. You got to have. You Mike gotta... took them to the playoffs without anybody. His without, rookie without, year. Without, without Paul in our hospital. Oh. Paul. Without I Paul in our Paul, hospital. <laughs> See? <laughs> See, everybody needs a Paul, bro. But Paul, like, wasn't, like, if Paul didn't bring us, no, if he didn't bring any scrubs, we would be all right. Like, we would still make it because we still got to wear our uniform and go to work. Bro, there's, Paul does so much more than bring scrubs. You know it. He does so much more. He does a lot of the underground work that we don't know about. Bro, I see Paul all over the hospital. When I go downstairs to grab lunch, I see Paul pushing stuff. But, like, this is a question. And not, everybody knows Paul. Not like a one one person makes that big of a difference, but it's like the team. Like, the whole team, right? I think everybody makes a difference. You think about Golden State Warriors 2016 when they had Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant, Clay Thompson, Steph Curry, Andre Iguodala, and Bogut, I believe, was their center at the yeah, Or, yeah. no, Zaza Pachulia. Zaza Pachulia. That I dirty mofo. <laughs> uh, anyways... You take Draymond out of that equation. I didn't even put him in the starting lineup. Like I just said, Clay, Steph, Draymond, Iggy, Zaza. They're, they're winning as many chips as they want. No one's stopping them. No one. I don't know. The bro. only reason the, Golden State lost Cavs to Toronto team? was because Clay got hurt and then KD got hurt. Only reason they lost. True. True. The, the Cavs, Cavs team. Draymond ain't making no difference. The Cavs team that came back and beat them 3 1 when they were down 3 1. They had LeBron James. Was a good Cavs team, bro. LeBron James, J.R. Smith, Kevin Love, that was our Kyrie good, They Irving. were loaded. They were beyond loaded. They were loaded. Without KD, I don't. Th I think the Cavs might repeat, might have a chance to add a three-peat. Without KD, bro. Mm -mm. Nope. They said it themselves. They beat they Golden said it State themselves, minus bro. KD. <laughs> they didn't. Bro, KD ain't no, no, no. Nothing. They said it themselves. Who? Draymond Green. Set, of Steph course. Curry. They've said it themselves. Without KD, we don't beat those Cavs teams. They, but they can, they can say that now, but they, they already won. They can say that now. I'm going to have a ghost. They can say that now. It's always this backtracking stuff. Oh, what time we got? Oh, 52 minutes. Okay. I got a, a scenario. This We're going to get away from basketball. I asked this question actually a while ago, but I didn't ask you this question. I've, I actually have answered this question, so I'm, I want to know your answer. All right, let's go. All right, so it's a would you rather question. Let's go. All right. This we got to get into these deep two Yeah, stuff yeah, we'll too. hit yeah, those yeah, two. Yeah, we'll, yeah, hit those yeah. two. we'll hit this, this scenario, the, those, and then we'll sign it out. <laughs> okay, so the question is, you're trapped in a mall, right? Mm-hmm. There is either... A gorilla actively hunting you, trying to kill you, but you're in a mall. Okay. Or there are seven black mambas in the mall <laughs> actively hunting you. Dude. Which one are you taking? Oh. And why? Jeez, man. There's I only am... one right answer here. Ah! There's only one right answer. I am deathly afraid of snakes. Like, it doesn't matter if it's poisonous, non poisonous. Like, it could be a little bitty snake. I am going to die. Why did it have to be snake? <laughs> Why did it have to be a snake? All right, so what's your answer? I am taking the gorilla, bro, because I don't want to run from seven black mambas. First of all, they are fast. Black mambas are fast. Okay, let's say they weren't actively hunting you. Second of all, there's just they're, they, but they're they're if they saw you, they're going to end you for sure. But the seven mambas, they don't roll in a pack. They're just throughout the mall somewhere. I am literally there. I am in the mall right now. Okay, and all I see is black mambas. And it is my worst nightmare. Like, I am, I would rather, I, like, Lord, take the wheel. <laughs> You're taking the gorilla? Like, bro, I'm taking the gorilla. I can find, I can, I can find a place where he can't get me. You, if you I can't am quiet, hide from a gorilla. If I am quiet long enough and still long enough, the gorilla's going to give up. I'll find a quiet, still place in the dark somewhere. I ain't doing seven snakes. You cannot hide from a gorilla. He can see you. Noah, I hate 
hate snakes, bro. <laughs> like, like I hate them. It could be a little garden snake, a little, a little itty bitty thing. So you're taking your chances with the gorilla. It. I'm taking my chances with the gorilla, cause all I need is a shotgun. Bang bang, <laughs> it's over with. I God, oh, why did this scenario God. have to be a snake? Oh, that was that was ah! easier than I thought. It was Jeez. easier than I thought. I picked the gorilla too. Oh, I picked I picked the gorilla too. I have nightmares tonight, bro. <laughs> I I freaking hate snakes, bro. My mom my mom put this fear of snakes in me early. Like she, ah, oh, she messed me up, bro. I can't. Oh, so you want to hear a story? I can't even about do the snake? snake exhibit at a zoo. You want to hear a story about a snake? I'll tell you a story. You're not the only one. I promise. Over here having a panic attack. I got two stories for you, actually, because you like snakes. So I hate them. I went to Petco one time, right, with my wife, and she swears this never happened, but I was there. I saw it happen. She was looking. Back was turned. Wasn't even looking at me. And I explained it to her, and then she's like, "I thought I heard something." So I was like, "Yeah, you heard what I'm explaining to you right now." I was looking at the snakes and the lizards and shit, right? And I'm looking like I'm eye level with this case and it's like a it's like a coral snake or something it was like black and orange it was like weird looking snake and I, i'm like looking at it and i'm not like tapping on the glass i'm not an animal but i'm I like i'm looking at him and i just see him kind of like moving around a little bit like that and then all of a sudden i'm like looking at him and i'm like like close right i'm like not super close because i don't like snakes either but i'm close enough he strikes the glass like I would flicks, flicks, like strikes the glass, glass, and he goes flick, flick, like, oh. like it literally. He struck the glass, and I was like, oh, uh, oh, oh, I was like, oh, I couldn't believe that like he had struck me because if there was no glass there, he was biting me. There no I grabbed my wife. I was like, we're out. I was like, we are out. He just got in the store. Ooh. I was like, we are out. I'm not doing this. And she's like, what happened? I was like, you heard that? It was like a little, like you heard it, like strike the glass. I was like, he was trying to kill me. And that that pissed me off. I was like, because he was, he probably was. And the second snake story. One time, I was riding my bike. I was at, in like junior year, and I was riding my bike with my family. We we're all just like riding our bikes or whatever like that. And so I'm the last person in line. I'm just riding my bike, just living my best life. And we were in like a, and we we're in Colorado, so there's like a lot of brush area in Colorado. And I'm riding my bike, and then all of a sudden, like literally like it was like perfect timing but i had nowhere to go because i was on the sidewalk so I, I had nowhere to go it was like brush and brush drop off both sides snake shoots across like just darts out dead center of the sidewalk it's face it's not facing me it's like trying to get to the other side but it's like taking up the whole sidewalk and i have nowhere to go and i can't stop because i'm going pretty fast so i run it over Dead center, middle of the snake. Snake coils up around my tire, just constricts around my tire. I jumped off my bike and ran for another hundred yards. Ah! <laughs> Dude, what? Like just like, and like think about like I'm trying to think of a good way I can explain it. Like you remember like those snap bracelets? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like did that around your tire? It like cr like it went from like long to like really short and around my tire. So I just. Dude. darted and i turn around and i see it like unravel itself and then just like dart into the forest and i'm like i'm that bike can stay there for the rest of my life You're done with that bike i don't need it anymore You're done with it because i'm not going back there and he's gonna be like you fell into my trap and come out and bite me it's not no gonna way. happen no I'm so, no no way bro i was uh i was dating this girl and uh we were on a hike and um this was like way way back in the day i'm like 19 20 mm -hmm. um and we're i'm trying to take her to the spot we're in chattanooga i'm trying to take her to this spot to watch the sunset yep and um <laughs> and we were on this trail and i literally bro like she just stops and it's just like i'm like what you looking at what's going on what's up and she is looking at this tree and i go to the other side of the tree yep and it's a snake, bro. I level with me. And it's like, I wasn't obviously watching because there's a, like a part of the trail. There's a part where the, the tree, tree's root like sticks up. No. And so I've hiked that trail so many times. I just know that that's where the root is. Oh, no. And so I just step right over it. Keep going. She stops right where the, right beside the root. I didn't even look at it, bro. The snake is eye level with me. The snake is still going. 
into the brush. I'm like, we gotta go. Like we're out. I am gone, dude. So you didn't even go to the sunset. You, just took back, you went back the other way. No, no, no. I went to the spot. Oh, <laughs> I legit was like, you left the person. Back I down. left her. I was gone, bro. I was like, I was like, this snake could have ate us. I'm surprised you didn't leave too. It wasn't gonna eat me. Though, it was I'm gone. Gone. Oh, God, it's gonna eat you. It's, oh, shoot. Bro, that's that's insane. That's insane. Needless to say, it didn't work out with her. Uh, yeah, no, that's that's so. That's, 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 yeah, that's that told her all she needed her. to know yep, right there. Probably did. That was it. It, was like, it just just fizzled out after that. It was gone. Just toasted, bro. Like I hate snakes. Like, okay, now I know we're on snakes. I got another snake story. I got so many like close encounters with snakes. Heart, bro. This is the last one, and then we'll go into the cars. I promise you'll you'll be all right. Same similar scenario actually. We were hiking. I was hiking with a friend of mine, and we were hiking. And there's like. In Colorado, there's just so many hiking trails, like anywhere you go. But there are snakes everywhere you go. And there's like rattlesnakes. Like they're not, it's no joke. Like these are real snakes. I ain't never going there, bro. But you're thinking like, ah, what, the, what are the chances I see a snake? Like I barely see like butterflies nowadays. <laughs> like I don't see anything. So we're hiking on the trail because that's like what it tells you. Because everywhere is signs posted. Don't go off the trail because there are rattlesnakes in the area. Dumb 18 year old kids. Fuck it. Let's just go over the let's go over the fence and let's go start walking in this because that part looks cooler. Like this trail is boring. I want to go hike on some rocks and stuff. Yeah. We get probably like hundred yards off path and we're weaving in and out, stepping over bushes and through the rocks and everything like that. And I'm in front and I take a step and I'm like literally like mid step at this point. Like I'm about to step over a bush. And I take my, I lift my foot up to go step over the bush. All I hear is just like the rattle. Like I heard the noise and I heard it. I would be done for it. And it, it started slow. And so now I'm like frozen in fear. Like my foot didn't hit the ground. I'm like, this could very well be my last step ever. And so I'm like, okay, let me just fucking back up real slow. And I put my foot on the ground. And then all I hear is just it gets louder. And more intense, like like it's moving now, and I'm like, yo, like I, I, I turned around and I ran right past the person I was with. I was gone. Like, Fucking, I'm leaving, and I ran back, hopped the fence, and they're sitting around, turning around. What's going on? What happened? I'm like, run! I'm like, you gotta go. go! You gotta go! And then, yeah, we from then on out, never ever not took a trail, bro. I wouldn't either. Never wouldn't ever not either. took a trail. So I got a I got a four year old and a six year old. Mm-hmm. And uh, my six-year-old, bro, he called me one day. He was like, this was a couple months back. He was like, Dad, I really like snakes. I touched a snake at school today. I was like, oh, you did what? what? Oh. Like, bro, I don't know if you know about your daddy, but we don't, we don't, we don't do Can that here. pet snake? Yeah, that's what he <laughs> asked me. That's what he asked me. I was like, bro. I'm going to have to pray about that. Like, like let, me t- let me think about it. Let me uh, have a good conversation. How about a cat? <laughs> or a puppy? I'll get you a llama at this I'm point. Like, <laughs> I'm like trying to my best to redirect. Like, well, he's like, dude, we'll do anything. <laughs> like, I'll do anything. Like, it's an armadillo, maybe a crocodile. <laughs> a crocodile. <laughs> anything. Like, the fact that snakes have no arms, no legs, but can move. But like, can kill you. And kill you? Like. And then grab you with no arms. Like that's, that's not, not right. right. Like that's not right. No, that's not right. It's not right. Like I just can't. No. And then you hear all these stories about you ever heard the story about uh the lady with the python in her house, the house and the baby, baby was in the room? No, no, no. It it was like she she took it to the vet and she was like she was like I don't know what keeps happening, but the snake every time I wake up in the morning it's lying next to me. Whoa. Yeah, fuck. The vet is like, yeah, you got to get rid of that. He's trying to kill you. It is sizing you up because it's going to eat you. Oh, he's trying to think like how he's like, oh, every snake. I don't care how long you've had it as a pet. Oh, no. Like them jokers is trying to eat you, dog. They're all trying to kill you. I don't understand why people have pet snakes. It's disgusting. I'm not judging you, but I'm judging you, dog. Uh, you got a snake. Yeah, we can't be friends. <laughs> we can't be friends. I ain't coming to your house. Story I was talking about that one I thought you were talking about. There was this. There was a lady, and her, it was there was this python. But her, they live in Australia, so there's anything in Australia can kill you. Absolutely. And she's living. They're living in like a beach house or something like that. And a Burmese 
python, like full grown snake is in their house. But her husband is like one of those like crocodile hunters, like, all right, mate, like, let's go, you know? Like, he, that's what he does. Like, they, he literally does that, like, there. Oh, that's a beauty. Oh, look at that over there. <laughs> but here's the kicker wife, not into it. Not about it. Like, not <laughs> nothing to do with it. Husband is away on business when that per- Burmese python is in their house. She sees it in the house. It's in the it's in the kids' room. I'd burn the house down. It's in the kids' room. The kids like three. There ain't no way. And he's like laying in the bed, and she's like trying to get him to come out, but he's just asleep, like you know, whatever. Like so, think about this room right here, right now, right? So if the kids' bed was like against that wall over there, the Burmese python is in the closet right there, and it's up high, like it's up high, and so she's like freaking out, right? But I don't know if it was like her mother instincts or just some strange sense of like she was like ter- petrified but she just didn't want anything to happen to her kid yeah. she dragged the burmese python by its tail dang out of the house yo dude that to me is motherly instinct. like i said there, that's the only thing it could have been like oh for my child i'm doing it but because her husband wasn't there and he couldn't he's he's all about it oh, i'll grab it over there yeah crikey. like a whole thing but she was like Mm-mm. we're moving like, yeah, you know, we're like moving. Yeah. but then he's like no you gotta get rid of it you gotta kill him or take him out don't kill him but just get him out because if you don't you're gonna lay eggs yeah. bunch of baby Burmese pythons rolling around here nope bro you've heard about like what's been going on in the Everglades people just letting their pythons go and all the like there's a problem like they're yeah, Florida I'm not. Is overrun. Yeah, no, I'm good. With large snakes, bro. Did you know that? Mm, I, it I, is overrun. Now that you told snakes. me, I'm not gonna sleep. Like, <laughs> no, not down here, bro. Down, oh, down, over there. Down over there. Yeah, we're like eight hours away from the Everglades, but I mean, we're kind of safe. But it's people, what until what until they start migrating up here. Yeah, but it's like people who have these snakes for pets, and then they get too big. And they're like, ah, just let them go. Just let them go. Let you don't, go. you go you gonna mess, mess up our up. ecosystem, right? <laughs> they gonna start eating the, everything. They have, they have. They are gonna take over the world. Oh, uh, we gotta move on. I would. There would be a for, if I was that if I was married to that woman. There would be a for sale sign in our yard. Oh I'd yeah, be, I'd be like, hey, we are moving. Like, see how you feel about to snakes America. is how I feel about spiders. Quick. I can't do spiders. I don't know how people are afraid of spiders. Like, See, this is interesting because I'm less afraid of snakes than I am spiders. Spiders are not that bad. The only reason I say that is because I've had just nightmare to me. stories with spiders. Okay. But like spiders, I feel like you're what you're about to say is like spiders. I can kill them because they're they're like this yeah, big, they're little. Yeah. But a snake, you have to like really consider like how you're gonna kill him, yeah. and like if you hit him, and he doesn't die. Like he's gonna move and all that. And yeah, I get it. The spider, though, for me, like. I've just had too many instances where, like, I've seen a spider, like, it'd be, like, on the wall over there. And I'm like, okay, I gotta go kill it. Right? <laughs> like, and I'm, like, hyping myself up. And your wife wants up, you to. And she's like, right? go kill it. <laughs> Fuck. Now I gotta kill it. And I can't, like, <laughs> not kill it because then it's gonna be, like, the man oh, the oh, like, oh, you, yeah. you're supposed to be this whole thing, right? Of course. So, I'm like, okay. But way before her, I met my wife, I was still deathly afraid of spiders. Equal like, rights, equal fights. Couldn't do it. And I'm like, you kill it. <laughs> Be like, baby. <laughs> but then we moved down here. It's like, I think it's just bugs in general for me, but like specifically spiders, because I hadn't seen a cockroach until I moved down here. I had not seen a cockroach until I moved down here. And there was one, like, I'll, I'll, we'll get, oh my God. Then we'll get into it later. But this spider story, if it was a spider on the wall, I could never kill it. If it was on the floor, I would stomp its ass out. Yeah. But if it's on the ceiling, wall, out of my reach a little bit, I ain't doing it. But now I've, I will. <laughs> I had to learn though how to do it strategically, and so that was what I had done at that point. Where at that point, when I was finally able to kill a spider, there was a spider like I had to get up there, you know, whack yeah. it, and he didn't die right away. <laughs> I hit the shit out of him, and he like blocked it. <laughs> he blocked it. He put his hand up and like, <laughs> like held this. He's like, no, today's not the day. And, and I hit him, and he didn't leave, like drop. He just yo, and he went <laughs> puny human, and then he started moving. Yo, and I was like, okay, well, next time that ain't gonna happen. Second time here, and my I have like a outside of my shed, like on the back side of my house, there was a web, like something from Charlotte's Web. It was like. Spy, it was like Aragog from Harry Potter. Big old web. Giant. The spider was like 
literally like i'm not capping like it was as big as my fist like it was a monster spider and it had like yellow on its back i'm thinking like if i don't kill this thing like it's it i i don't know what we're gonna do like oh, <laughs> yeah. we're gonna have to move for real but it's on the outside of my house but i'm thinking like i don't want him to get inside of my house so i have to kill him took a slide like one of my sandals and i like swung and it literally again it was like like that's how loud it sounded when i hit him and i hit him like square and it literally <laughs> like i hit him hard and he didn't leave the web he just started raveling more web and now he's not now he's mobile so now <laughs> i'm going back to work now i'm like <laughs> he's he's gonna kill me like he's gonna plot against me and he's gonna come after me so i got a hose and i sprayed him down and now he's soft and weakened and then i hit him again and then that was the end of it that was it he died i hope that's crazy, man. I didn't I go to find a body. You hope. I, I didn't find a body, so I don't I don't know. Shoo, you might still have a spider yeah, I don't know. going around. But you know what, man? It's crazy how everybody has like something different like they're afraid of. Everyone has a fear. Like everyone's got a fear. It could be heights, snakes, spiders. We're all afraid of something. We are all afraid of something. Yeah. But it's so interesting because like someone will be deathly afraid of like heights and then you can't comprehend being afraid of heights. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, I can't go on the airplane, and you yeah. just on the airplane, like sleep on the airplane. <laughs> Bro, what? <laughs> like he was like not. Wow, <laughs> that was that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, someone could yeah. be scared, and you just yeah. knocked out. Oh. I didn't mean to. You know what? Yeah, I couldn't comprehend your fear of spiders. And bro, I I yeah. validate your fear. I apologize no, like, for, I, for not validating that earlier because no, I am deathly afraid of snakes. Yeah, and I want people to be like, bro, yeah, yeah, crazy. We don't we don't mess with yeah. that. Yeah. So yeah, bro, spiders no. are crazy. Yeah, spiders don't, don't just get snakes. Crazy. Anything that can kill you, I feel like you better yeah. have some logic and be scared. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Like airplanes, like if you crash, that'd be a hell of a way to go. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. It, mm. Could you're more likely to die in a car. You're crash more likely than you to are. die by a spider eating your face than you are in a plane crash. Yeah. Unless you fly a spirit, then you're you're done. <laughs> no shot. But hey, uh we've talked about a lot today. We talked about uh what's her name? Karen. Karen. <laughs> Karen. You about to say her name again? Don't overshare. Don't overshare. Don't overshare. Don't we talked a little bit about leadership. leadership. That was dope. That was sick. Yeah. Um, if you can inspire others to do more, dream more, see more, and become more, you are in fact a leader. And if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. And if you're a number two, baby, it's all right. That's, That's okay. okay. That's Accept okay. your role. Do it Accept well. Accept your role. Do it better, better than you ever thought you could. Find a LeBron. Find somebody who can cast a vision that you can jump on board with Absolutely. and help carry that vision forward. It's all good being a good follower. We need good followers. And then we talked a little bit about fears today. That was interesting. Now y'all know a little bit more about us. You know a little bit about us. I am deathly afraid of snakes. And I am deathly afraid of spiders or anything that can kill me. And that's okay. So I feel like we ended with an icebreaker, a deeper, and then a... What's your... What, which ones do you have? Ooh, I got deep. Okay, perfect. So then what we got... <clears throat> oh, you, you can read yours. We'll do icebreaker first. Deep, then deeper. And then we'll sign it off. We'll sign it and off. And do the peace out, girl scout. All right. <clears throat> icebreaker. What do you think is... Oh, wait. We already did this one. Damn it. <laughs> it was the coolest accent. Which one's the coolest accent you can have? All right. Oh, that was fun. Go back and watch that episode. Which vegetable did you hate growing up? Do mushrooms count as vegetables? Absolutely. I freaking hated mushrooms. Do you still hate them? Still, to this oh. day. My mom's tried to tried to shove them down my throat and I would throw up every time I would force myself to gag and throw up. Mm -hmm. I think eventually I developed the ability to just, as soon as it would maybe a texture thing. Yeah. But as soon oh. as I taste or feel a mushroom, it's like <laughs> instantly hate mushrooms. Yeah. Mushrooms ain't it. They are not it. I don't understand why people love mushrooms. It's just gross to me. It's a fungus. I 100% <laughs> agree with that. Oh my God. It's disgusting. But if I had to pick a different one, if I had to pick a different fruit, or what I say, vegetable, a different vegetable, oh, I got, I feel like I didn't eat many vegetables, but I feel like if I did have to pick one, I would probably say like cauliflower. Same thing, texture wise. Like broccoli, texture. I could eat. Yeah. But like cauliflower was just like too like flaky to me. It's like, <laughs> like a gag. Yeah, like, you, you definitely have to, you have to yeah. get past, yeah, you have to get past that. All right, let's, let's get, get deep. deep. Oh, 
I'm about to throw up right now thinking about <laughs> mushrooms. My lord. <laughs> or a snake. <laughs> Man, this one's. Uh, don't want to do that one. No, don't want to do that one. I mean, because I'm your friend, but we don't touch each other. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> Says between us, who's touching? Oh yeah, no. It's like I don't know. Let's see. Mm. I can't do this one either because I. Who taught you how to cook or bake? I don't do either. I don't bake. That's fair. I don't bake. I don't cook. Rachel Ray. Rachel Ray. Mm. Oh, this was good. Are you quicker to blame or take accountability? Early me blame. For Same. sure. Yeah. But once I started getting like in trouble more often, I realized I ran out of people to blame. And then I finally started looking at like myself. So then I, I now I really hold accountability like as like one of my number one qualities. Yeah. Like if I mess something up or someone gets in trouble on my behalf, I'm the first person to be like, that was my yeah. idea. It's all yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. It definitely takes growing up to to start taking accountability. Because oh, yeah. I too, I was quick to blame and um shoot. Man, you learn real quick. Like, do you want your relationships to get better, or are you gonna you take always be the problem? Yeah, yeah. Or are you gonna take ownership and accountability for where you know your part in it, and just take ownership and say, "Hey, I messed up." Mm -hmm. You know, it's you. You have the opportunity to mend relationships when you can say, "Hey, I messed up. For sure. I apologize. I'm sorry. Yeah, I could do better. I will be better." Um, than you do if you just blame in the other person. Yep. You have no chance of redemption, no chance of reconciliation when you're always pointing the finger. Uh, facts. Facts. That's 100% real. One hundo. Golly. Okay, last question. Deeper says, um, if you were to donate all your money to one cause, which would you pick and why? Hmm. That's good, man. There are a lot of really great organizations out there doing some really great things yeah um i personally because i worked with this person and got to see what they were doing um uh there's this lady out of atlanta right now her name is latanya gates she started this organization called paw kids and okay. um so she bought a trap house okay. in bankhead atlanta Ooh. and turned it into like if you hear ti rap you hear you'll hear him say bankhead yeah um it's now called donald lee hollowell it's gentrifying and completely different now okay <laughs> it is it is but it's the hood she bought she bought this trap house and turned it into an after school program completely remodeled it bought multiple houses alongside this other ministry um and they're just they're pouring into the young kids oh, in that wow. community there was no like after school kids were getting in trouble yeah not safe in the hood yeah but she created a safe place for kids to come wow. and learn, come and grow. She created a real safe house. Real safe house. And uh, now people, the likes of a TI, the likes of a Killer Mike yeah. are investing and pouring into that organization. Yeah. And, That's a uh, great cause. Yeah, she's doing, she's doing some really great things out there in Atlanta. Also, uh, another organization I would, is Mission 127, used to work with that organization. They're doing something similar with uh, lower income families and lower income communities. They're investing into those, those young kids and tutoring them, yeah, mentoring them, just being there for them after school. Giving them a real shot. Giving them a real shot. Dude, that's you know? sick. That's yeah. a good choice. So, just because I know those two organizations, yeah. no, that's I, I would really say good. those two. I was gonna say like, yeah. damn, I don't know. That makes it difficult for me because you like I, I haven't really like worked with any individual charities, but like one that's always like every time I see videos of it like brings a tear to my eye. The Make a Wish Foundation. Yeah, that's Make a Wish is I, dope. That's probably where I would go. Because yeah. like I've seen like wishes granted, you know, like yeah. these kids like terminally ill, cancer or whatever like that, and yeah. like they'll get like their dream will just yeah. come true. Yeah. Like, that's that's beyond like yeah. That's the same kind of thing though. Like yeah, yeah. it's like the younger kids. Like yeah. I don't know. I feel like. If they know, like, it's so hard watching a parent's reaction to that because, like, obviously, like, they know the situation. And the kid, mm -hmm. like, knows but, like, is entirely unaware that they only have limited amount of time. Yeah. So, for them to, like, get to meet their hero or get something signed or get early access to a game or whatever it is, like, that's huge. It's really cool. Enjoy their last yeah. moments or whatever. That was yeah. make a wish for sure. Make, make a wish. Damn. Yeah. This yeah. was a good episode. It was good. It was fun. Well... Thank Who you. would you 
Oh yeah, who would y'all give your money to? Who would you donate to? Y'all should to? answer your questions in the all these questions we asked in the comments. Fire away. Unless you're not real. <laughs> uh, we filmed an hour and 19 minutes today. Yo. Y'all get in banger episodes. It was fun. For real. Well, thank y'all for watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Drop some stuff down in the comments. Find like five people, five friends. Tell them to subscribe. Just give them to YouTube. Noah Cisna in the YouTube bar. Views from the Cis Podcast. Subscribe, man. We're trying to hit 100. We're trying to make it there. Help us get to 100. That's our goal. That's it. Period. But what are we, what are we going to do when we get to 100? <laughs> we'll like... We'll switch seats. We'll, we'll switch seats. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I are we gonna do when we get to a thousand? I feel like if we hit a thousand, let's set some goals, bro. If we hit a thousand, I feel like if we get a thousand, we gotta get like a tattoo. I would get a tattoo. It's gotta be a tattoo, like something, something about the podcast, like a microphone or like something like that. A microphone would be fine. Something. Like that. Yeah, you're covered in tats, so that's <laughs> easy, <laughs> easy for you. That's I have one button. tattoo. Oh, yeah, yeah, and I cried the whole time I got it. I was like, you. I went with a group of people. Um, they were all like, hey, this won't hurt. After five minutes, you won't feel it. It was like 45 minutes later. You felt like, everything. <laughs> you lied to me. Yeah. All of you. Oh, okay. I don't trust any of you. I know. <laughs> At this point, I'm numb to it. I love tattoos. Yeah. Right, here's a good one. If we hit 100, we both put up $100, and we just give $200 out to like homeless people. Let's do it. And we'll film it. Help us do it. We'll give $200. Whether it's like 20 bucks a person or just 200 to one person, we'll both put up $100. If we hit 100 subscribers before May. I think people are going to are gonna want to help somebody out. Yeah. So like that was literally like the perfect car, perfect question. I feel like on the, on the subject of like being good people, $100 each, $200 out to a homeless person or homeless people. Or we'll donate to an organization. We'll do something. Yeah, yeah we'll do something. We'll do something. Help Bye. somebody else. Cool. Let's go. Let's, go. Let's, do, Let's it. do it. Go on. Go on. Hit the button. You can do it. All right, y'all. Well, thank y'all for watching. This has been another episode. What is this? Episode four? Three. Three. In season three. I thought it was season two. Season two. Season two, episode. Four. I think it's four. Unless you shot one without me, this is episode three, bro. Because, nah, yeah, you're right. Episode four. Because I was season two, episode three. Yeah. yeah. So, oh. season two, <laughs> episode four. Thank y'all for watching. It's been real. Peace out, Girl Scout. Boom.